Welcome back to another video. We are on Big Brother Season 26, Episode 3. Well, the first thing we see in this episode is that we have our new intros. And I gotta say, the best intro, I would say, go to Brooklyn and Lisa. Lisa's pose reminded me a lot of Caitlyn Herman from BB20. Y'all know I'm a big BB20 fan, so a lot of my references will come from that season. That was my favorite season of all time. And then... Brooklyn's pose was an arm fold pose, but like I said in my premiere reviews, Brooklyn just comes off as a boss. And the way she folded her arms just made her look like even more of a boss, in my opinion. Speaking of arm folds, way too many people did an arm fold pose. Like, can we just get that out of here? And I know that kind of contradicts, because I said Brooklyn had one of the best poses, and she did an arm fold pose, but she did the best arm fold pose. All the rest of them were just basic. No offense. Now we get to the actual episode, and the first thing we see are the introductions. And I found this so funny because we're on episode three, and we're just now getting the introductions where the group introduces themselves to each other. Not a lot of noteworthy things came out of this. I think the biggest thing that come out was that Lisa interrupted Tucker when he was doing his introduction and I'm pretty sure a lot of us on the internet went like had a brain blast and realized because Tucker's been hating on Lisa heavy lately and we did not know why and now we all feel like this is why she, he went first and she interrupted him and it's funny because a lot of people played off of that and I feel like because it was awkward he was in the middle of doing his introduction, and he said that he was a chef. And then she stood up and said that she was a chef. And then it's like that went on. It was like a domino effect of everyone interrupting each other as like a ha-ha moment. But when she did it initially, it was very much awkward and kind of cringe. Something else that came out was we see that Chelsea is actually crushing on Cam. I wonder if anything will come out of that. I can see those two like hooking up. Like, not literally hooking up, but, like, I can see those two, like, crushing on each other and actually maybe forming a relationship, like, you know, maybe seeing where it goes. But other than that, the intros were pretty normal. This cast seems fun. I actually like them. I know it's, like, a popular thing to just dislike the cast when a Big Brother cast comes out, but this cast seems pretty fun. It's no one on this cast that I say that I really dislike. I really like all of them, genuinely. Right after the introductions finish, we see the AI come on screen, and she basically says, y'all gotta pick have-nots, and we're taking volunteers. I think it was four, and the people that volunteered was Tucker, Cam, Chemo, and Quinn. So those are our four have-nots for the week. We see the have-not room, and it's, it's pretty basic, but it looks cool. I'm not gonna lie. To me, the room looks kind of cool. It would be obnoxious to sleep in, because it's like black and neon and like... Everything's hard. So it's, it's like hard surfaces. I don't... Tell me what the theme was because it, it probably went over my head. But like, yeah, hard surfaces and the colors were obnoxious. Next thing we see is everyone just pretty much doing a mixer, just talking, getting to know each other. And we see Kenny and Matt talking and they're kind of just talking about the military. And Kenny actually does like admit to being in the military, which like, I, I was surprised that he even went with that. But I guess that's not like, I don't know. But I, know, but I know Matt talked about that his dad was in the military and a cop, and Kenny was just, like, trying to deny, 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 or, like, redirect or reflect, not trying to get out that he is a cop. But I feel like it's very obvious, and it will come out. And to be honest, I don't even know if it's that big of a secret to hold. I know Derek won season 16, and he was a cop, but that doesn't mean all cops are going to do well on the show. Then we see Rubina, Chelsea... Brooklyn and McKenzie and I like this group of four and they were talking about I think Rubina was the one that brought up forming an all-girl alliance with those four McKenzie was talking about how she likes Angela and would like to bring Angela into the group Rubina pretty much said she was worried about Angela and did not want to bring Angela into the group And it seemed like the four were kind of like in a disagreement about that But not like us like like it was still light like they had just started talking about it, but like they kind of had a difference Mackenzie wanted to bring her in, Rubina didn't. And I would say I'm more on the side of Rubina when it comes to that. Uh, some people come in to break up this conversation, and they the girls were so funny how they just, like, <laughs> they especially Rubina, like, she switched up what they were talking about real quick and just started yelling about, like, her bag or something, like, somehow she packed. Then we see one of the most awkward segments, probably the most awkward segment this season, which is so many people gathered in the bathroom, which... 
on Big Brother, like, that's a normal thing. A lot of people just, like, chill in the bathroom. I find it weird, but I don't know. Like, it was so many people in the bathroom. And then you have T-Core and I think Matt just showering. Like, so you got these two people, a man and a woman, naked, at a very intimate point in life, showering, right? Like, in the day, like, showering. And, like, all these people were just around. Like, I personally would not feel comfortable. And they just met all these people. And then, so, the big thing to come out of this, though, is... Actually, no, Matt was not showering. It was uh, Cam was showering. Because Matt was sitting next to Angela, and Matt was talking about, like, the have-not room and how his lower back hurts or his shoulder or something like that. And Cam was giving him advice, and then Angela was like, oh, no, don't do that. And I get it. It was a lighthearted thing. Like, I, I feel like some people took it too serious. Like, it was a laugh at the, like, oh, shoot. Like, that's how I would have took it. But some people took it a little too serious. But then the convo got worse because then Angela started saying that Matt was going to be in a showman's. It just became cringe and awkward and everyone felt awkward. And it seemed like Angela just kept going. Like, you can't feel the vibes of this room, the energy. Like, it was just off. And Matt, I did feel bad for Matt. It did feel like Angela was, like, attacking him and going after him. But, like, I don't know. It, it was awkward. And then, like, Angela started to walk out the room because this seemed like it went on for a minute. And Angela was about to leave out the, sh the bathroom. And, like, she's still, like, turning, talking about this man. And it's just like, just get out. This is awkward. This is ridiculous. And, then, like, like she, they talked about, like, Matt forming alliances and all that. And then we actually see, like, it was so ironic because then we see Matt and Kenny talking again in a room. And Angela walks in and they have to try to change the subject and it was awkward and noticeable, and Angela says, it's starting. Why Why would you say that? Why would you say that? Just walk in a room. You're making yourself, uh, in my opinion, a target of them, of Kenny and Matt, like, for no reason. And I like Angela. I like everybody, but it's just, I don't know. This was questionable. Next segment we see is with Lisa. She's cooking, and I find it. Can I just say, I am a feed watcher, and I am a feed review watcher. Like, when people talk about what happened on the feeds, Shouts out to Lisa, poor Lisa, because a lot of, I've heard more than one house guest say that Lisa's food is not good, and she's a chef. I find that so funny. Like, I don't know, I feel bad for her. Uh, but I was so tired of hearing Lisa talk about this edible gl glitter. She was talking about it so much, and then she tried, like, Tucker already don't like her because of what we saw in the introduction. And then she offers some of the guys, they're outside, and uh, it was like, it was, like, Matt, Tucker, like, some of the have-not guys as well. Like, they are. And she came out and said, food's ready. And they're like, we can't eat. And she's like, oh, well, here, can I put some edible glitter? It was awkward. It was just some of this stuff. And then she puts the edible glitter on their abs or on their torso. Chest. It was, I don't know, whatever. It just made them not like her even more. Uh, she's a target of especially Tucker. And then also Leah was like in the DR saying that she was not a fan of Lisa and felt like the edible glitter and the cooking was just her trying to like get brownie points. No pun intended. Next we go to this room where they find out the AI talks and they she sends them to a room where they find out who got who won the competition and gets the power up cards or whatever it's called level up cards game upgrade cards. I don't know, but she explained what the winners are like it will remain anonymous and you win a deep fake HOH which means that you can take control of the HOH at some point by just taking off the HOH's nominees putting up your own nominees and then you also can use AI to like spread say whatever you want pretty much which is a super cool I love that power it's super awesome I really wish I was on this season I feel like this was the season for me especially with Leah being in the house uh, and then the veto one, which is not as good as the HOH one, but it's still okay. Like, basically, you just can use another power veto. And with this veto, so it's after the initial veto. Then you can use a veto, and America votes for the replacement. And it's a live vote, so it'll be, like, quick. And AI uh, reminds everybody that this will remain anonymous. Like, you don't know. But, like, I am I missing something? Because can't they just talk and be like, what did you do? Like, how did you do in the color room? And if they're like, oh, I don't even know what color. What are you talking about? Then you know that they didn't compete in that one. Like, I just feel like if I was in the house or like, y'all know what I'm saying? It would be pretty easy to find out who won these competitions. Because if they didn't compete in the color competition, 
they couldn't have won one of the competitions. You know what I'm saying? And if they weren't inside the whatever, I don't even remember the second one. But y'all know what I'm saying. So we find out that my boy Quinn wins the HOH power card and Mackenzie wins the veto power card. I don't really know if it's called a power card, but I don't remember what it's called. I'm filming this a day after the episode and uh, yeah, my memory's washed right now. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit and just say what's on my mind that Quinn did end up telling Angela that he won the HOH one and I just find that so ridiculous and so pointless, but I guess I'm not in the house, and when you're, you got, you know something, it's kind of hard, like, I guess, like, you want to tell someone, but, I don't know, I just, I, personally, I think that, that was a bad move, not bad, like, not smart, like, he could have held on to that, and I don't think Mackenzie's told anybody, if I'm not mistaken, like, even, like, maybe I missed it if she said it on the feed, but I don't think she's told anybody. And we see Brooklyn and Leah talking game, and they were talking about who they think might have got the powers and stuff like that, and I just feel like Brooklyn is a gamer. Like, uh, all throughout this episode, like, she was having a lot of game talks, and she just seemed really smart. She was my favorite last episode, or one of my favorites last episode, and she was just climbing my ranks in this episode. Like, she was, she was talking game. She was doing her thing. Then we see Mackenzie and Leah talking. They go into the little storage room, and I thought something... Super good was about to come out of this, but it actually was just Leah telling Mackenzie that she was a chubby, chubby chaser. And I, we keep hearing this chubby chaser. I don't know. Like, she likes fat guys. Whatever. This is why I really should have been on this episode, this season. I don't know. And then she talked about, like, how she felt like production was playing tricks on her because she was expecting a big guy to be in this season. And she heard her say, that, that one's for me. They did that for me. <laughs> That's funny. I ain't gonna lie, that was funny. But, like, she saw that there wasn't none. And then they gave my boy... Uh, uh, we're in the first couple episodes, so, like, names are bad for me. But, uh, Joe. They gave Joe such a bad edit. They showed all these guys with their abs and stuff, like, flexing and stuff. And then they just cut to Joe, and the music just went, Pow. <laughs> We also see, like, a quick clip of Cedric saying that he's never been in a relationship. And I'm just like, come on now. Like, Cedric looks like, Cedric is literally a model. And let's be honest, he's a super good looking guy. And he's young. There's absolutely... I'm sorry, me personally, I'm not believing that Cedric has never been in a relationship. That's just me, though. We hear from the AI again, and she explains the new HOH rules, which are that instead of one, nominating two people, you're nominating three. And she introduces the AI Arena Challenge, which means that there's three people on the block. They still do veto. It's still going to be three people on the block after veto. Even if someone used the veto, there's still a replacement nominee. Then on the day of the eviction, like right before the eviction, there's going to be something called an AI arena. And there, the three people on the block are going to compete, and one person just leaves the block. And there will be two people remaining on the block for the eviction vote. I'm wondering with this, does this mean that we won't see a lot of live HOHs? You know what I mean? Because you AI arena, vote. Like, they can't change the AI arena that fast to switch it to an HOH comp. You know what I mean? Uh, but I love, I, I like this AI arena. I really wish I was on this season. As much as, more and more I talk about this season, I'm like, this was my season. Like, I really should have been on this. Then we get to the HOH competition, and this was a super cool competition. It's called New Rule, where it's played in rounds, and every round there's a new rule. The first round is... Everyone has to get into groups of three. And since there isn't enough people for five groups of three, two people will be left out, and those people are automatically eliminated from round one. So, excuse me, I'm going to have to look at my notes to remember these teams real fast. So, we had a team with pretty much everyone just took who was closest to them. Like, there was not really much, there wasn't much strategy with this. So, one team we have Cam, Leah, and Lisa. We have a team of Joe, T Core, and Angela. We have a team of Chemo, Brooklyn, Rubina, and we have a team of Kenny, Matt, and Quinn. So the two eliminated people are Tucker and McKenzie. So then we get to round two, where it's like a disc round, where it's played with teams. So every all three members of your team will throw this disc, and where it lands, like the table has like a bunch of numbers on it, and every number you get, like, oh God, I'm bad at explaining this. Basically, you throw the disc, and if the disc rolls off the table you get zero points but you're trying to get the disc to land on numbers that are on the table and whatever number your disc land on is the amount of points you get and it's added to the collective group of your team so your team score is what wins 
And I'm not about to go. I wrote down every single number that every single person scored. But I'm going to just tell y'all that the team that got eliminated that scored the least amount of points. Actually, no. The team with the least amount of points did not get eliminated. The team with the most amount of points got to eliminate any team that they wanted. And the team that scored the highest points was Kenny, Matt, and Quinn. And they decided to eliminate the team that scored the second amount of points, which was Brooklyn, Rubina, and Chemo. And I was really sad because I really like Rubina and Brooklyn and Chemo. Rubina and Brooklyn are like two of my favorites on the whole cast, though. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say that Chelsea and Cedric could not play in this because of the punishment that they got for coming last in the initial challenges that they played on episodes one and two. They also came out dressed up because they were the mascots. And I feel like you couldn't have picked two better mascots. They were both very charismatic and very, very hype. The third round is the teams playing against each other. So we have three teams left, and basically you're going to do the disc round again, and they change the numbers around a little bit, but you're going to throw the disc, and whichever member of the team scores the highest moves on to the final round. The other two are eliminated. And again, I'm going to have to look at my notes. Out of Matt, Quinn, and Kenny, Matt scored 21. Quinn's disc went off the table again because his went off in the first round or the second round as well. And then Kenny scored 22. So Kenny moved on by only one point. That was good. Then we had Cam, who scored zero. Leah, who scored 24. And Lisa, who also scored zero. So easy win for Leah. She moves on. And then the last team, you have T-Core, who scored 23. Joe, who I missed his score. I didn't write anything. And I know his name is Joseph, but I've just been calling him Joe. And then we have Angela, who scored 27. And I like this final three, this finals. Because, like, Leah was really funny. She was like, yeah, we got mom, we got pop, and then we got little girl, little baby girl. And I thought that was so funny. And then Leah was, like, the first one out. So then we literally just had mom and pop. And I think I found out that, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Kenny's older than Angela? But Angela ended up winning this competition. So she is the first HOH. So that's cool that she's the first HOH. It was funny because she was all like, Oh, yeah, I'm showing them that I came in and everyone's calling me mama. I didn't come in here to be mama. I'm, And I'm like, lady, you keep calling yourself mama. Like, she kept calling herself, like, all throughout the day. I'm like, you're the one that, like, I don't know. It was very contradicting, but I'm glad that she got the win and is the first HOH. And we see Kenny and Matt, and, of course, they have their big upset because they know that they are probably going up on the block. Then they're back in the house, and we see Angela inside of her bedroom with Cedric, Chelsea, and Joseph, I believe. And she she's moving out. And they all like, oh, we're going to miss you. We're going to miss you. And, of course, she tells them that they're safe. They're all safe. And T-Core. So I guess, like, she likes all them. And then she talks about some other people that she likes. Yada, yada. And we see a group of people hanging out in the backyard. And it was weird because Matt started complaining about Angela and... I'm like, why would you do this inside of a group, a big group? You probably don't even know everybody that's out here. Like, and by not know, I mean like you're looking up, you're not like seeing like, okay, he's out here, he's out here, he's out here. It's just a group of people, like you know. And he just starts talking about Angela, and Joe's right there listening. And Joe's Angela's number one ally at least to this point. And he literally goes back and tells Angela, and he he had a good reason in his in his dr. He said like, I don't want anyone else to do it. And then she finds out I was out there and I didn't do it. So I want to prove that I'm her number one. So I can understand that. So that's how Angela, I guess, like, her beef came. Because Matt was saying, like, how he didn't like how Angela treated him in the bathroom and stuff like that. So that's where that came from. And this is where we see Quinn tell Angela about his power. But I already went over that. I thought it was not a good move. I wouldn't have done it. But then we see Quinn and Angela actually form a final two. And they call it BB Guns. Which I actually like the name of that. I, I like the name of that alliance. I wish it was... Like, I like Quinn. Angela, I, I do like her. But I feel like she's not going to win this season. Because, like, once you have a target on your back in Big Brother, it's kind of hard to get it off of you. And make it all the way to the finals and win. Now, I'm not saying that can't be done. I mean, we saw Taylor win. You know, target every single week. <laughs> like, it can be done, but it's rare that you see somebody with a target early on and they survive all those weeks and win. And Angela has a target. She made herself one. So, I like to name BB Guns, though. 
So then we see Angela, she does her one on one. She already is thinking of nominating Kenny. Like, that's a, a guy that she already wanted. And I will say, she wasn't thinking about Matt from what we saw. And then she's like, all right, uh, I need other people that I think. I don't know where chemo came from, but she basically asked other people who they thought. And we had like Cam, Leah, Mackenzie, and Tucker all throw out Lisa's name as somebody that they wouldn't care to see or they would like to see on the block. Then we see Angela and Matt have an awkward one-on-one. -on -one. It was so cringe. I was like, oh my God. And like, Angela did apologize. I will say she did apologize for some stuff, but then Matt just talks way too much and just says like, oh yeah, if you were to put me on the block. He did say this. Like she, we saw in the feeds where she said like what, she exaggerated, but I feel like most people exaggerate conversations when they're against a person. So he's he did say, like, I would have the votes to stay. He would have the votes to stay in the house. And, like, he probably would win the BB arena and stuff like that, or the AI arena. He did come off as cocky, and Angela said that she never even considered, like, he wasn't even on her radar, but now he is. We get to nominations, and we see Angela. She's nominated Kenny, Lisa, and chemo and Lisa looks very shocked and I was like she was blindsided like she did not think this was happening at all and uh I don't even know if Angela told chemo to be honest but like I guess like she didn't even hint to them or to Lisa that she was going up Angela's reason for putting them up was that she didn't get enough game from them chemo said that he was shocked that he got put up but he was motivated to win the veto Lisa also said she was motivated to win the veto and Kenny said like he was shocked and I was like how like why when she won you said that you were nervous and stuff so that was weird that was awkward but yeah that was it for this episode I thought this episode was really really good I like this season I like this cast I I'm a fan uh coming out of this episode I would say my favorites are still Rubina still Brooklyn still Chelsea uh I think I like Lisa more I like Tucker more I like Quinn more uh, like, they're up there. Like, Quinn, Quinn is probably, but Quinn told Angela that thing, though. That's something I did not like. Quinn's probably my favorite guy inside the house. Quinn, Tucker, Tucker's also one of my favorite guys. Tucker, Quinn, those are my two favorite guys. And my two favorite female players would probably be Rubina and Brooklyn. And then Chelsea's right there, too. So, but leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Be sure to leave this video a like, comment, subscribe, and share it on all four social media. Until next time, guys, catch up later.